Hope family, thank you for joining us. We are on day 11. Give it up for yourselves. You have already made it past the halfway mark of this 21 day fast. I know some of you like, whoo, oh yes, you've made it. You've made it by the grace of God. Uh, And if this is your first time joining us, thank you for joining. Um, It's never ever too late, as I've been saying, it's never too uh, too late to join us on this spiritual path with God. Um, Thank you on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Alexander, and our gorgeous lady, Ashila. I know pastor's probably like, how come she gets all the compliments? Because she's the first lady. (laughs) So we want to thank you for joining us. This is day 11. Um, If you have uh, started with us since the first week, um, each week we have tackled different, different topics. And this we we uh, started off with relationships. Uh, we did our prayers for our children, uh, and now we are doing prayers for our family. Prayers for our family. So today kicks that off. Uh, but before we even go into diving into the Word of God, uh, we always want to start off by acknowledging Him with prayer and asking God to just uh, be within this. Um, prayer time and this study time with us. Uh, so if this is your first time, uh, definitely just take this time out to give thanks. If you're at home, if you're at work, put your earpiece in at work uh, and begin to just pray within your heart. If you got to go to the bathroom or whatever you need to do when it comes to just getting in God's presence and setting the atmosphere, do what you need to do. Uh, so right now we're going to start off and just say thank you, God. Uh, thank you for being a wonderful God. Thank you for being a miraculous God. Thank you for just being God. Uh, God, we are truly grateful for what it is that you have been doing um, these past few days within these past few weeks of even being in this new year, Lord God. Uh, God, we pray right now, God, that you be with Uh, everyone right now within our hearts, Father, within our family that's connected with us, our family and our friends, Lord God, ones that have lost loved ones, God, that you be that comforter, Lord God, that they need you to be, Lord. Uh, God, as we dive into your word on today and as we are attacking and decreeing some things over our family, Father, that you be in the midst, God, and that you hear us, oh God. Lord, let your Holy Spirit, Father, dwell it within us right now. Father, I pray that everyone that is listening, every Everyone that shares this, everyone who um, are being a part of this fast, God, that you allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to speak to our hearts, open up our ears to be able to hear your voice, Lord God, sensitize our, our eyes to see you, Lord, sensitize our hearts to feel you, God. And God, I pray that you um, uh, be the Holy Spirit that speaks within our mouth, oh God, as we be as we do the things that you've called us to do, God, that we walk in purpose, we walk in your alignment, allow your Holy Spirit to always be with us, that we don't, don't we do, we do not do anything without your Holy Spirit. Uh, so God, right now, I pray that you be with me. Um, during this time uh, of our noonday corporate prayer and that God you speak through me you work through me you know what your people need oh God so God let it be that you are the one that is speaking and teaching in Jesus name we pray everybody say amen all right so as I said we are on day 11 of our 21 day fast um we do have our prayer points on all of our social media uh pages um, where you will need those towards the end of this um study time so that we can decree and declare things um together corporately um so our prayer points will are provided already along with our scripture our scripture has also been provided uh for today if you um, missed the prayer call in the past. No worries. Everything has already uh, been posted on our social media. I highly encourage you to go back and uh, listen and learn and uh, just hear from God. So today we are on day 11 and we're coming from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, where we'll be reading from the 30th through the 34th verse. So it says, He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. So get your pen and paper together. Get your iPad together. Get your Word documents out. Whatever you need at this time to get what it is that you need spiritually. So like a movie. I want everybody to think of your favorite movie. Most movies have a good ending, right? So during this, what we just read, that we just read the ending. So it's not fun for most, you know, for most people. It's not fun when you uh, go to watch a movie and then you go and you fast forward to the end. You want to know what led up to it, right? So we're going to go back. We're gonna we, we're gonna uh, rewind a little bit. And so how do we get how did we get up to this point? So to give you the backstory, Luke is the uh, author of Acts, and he went on this journey with Paul and Cyrus. Uh, so chapter uh, 16 in Acts basically talks about the journey that Luke experienced with Paul and Cyrus. Um, so Paul and Cyrus, uh, Silas, sorry, Paul and Silas and Luke were minding their own business. They were walking to the place of prayer and they were messing with nobody. They were just, like I said, they were standing in a lane. Along came a girl who had the spirit of fortune telling. She followed them around yelling, these men are servants of the most high. They are telling you how you can be saved. Days had passed and she kept this up each day, shouting the same thing over and over and over. Paul pretty much was like, you know, what? this this girl here, she she annoying me. He had enough. He knew that uh, when he came to her, that this was an evil spirit in her who was keeping up all this noise and saw that it was an hindrance. So yes, 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 she, you know, she was shouting what was of truth. However, because the source of her knowledge was a demon, Paul knew accepting the demon's words would appear to be linking the gospel with demon related activities. So for ones that uh, do not know, Associate, associating yourself to things or people such as like horoscopes, fortune telling, witchcraft. These are things that are not of God. And you can read more about that in Deuteron- Deuteronomy, excuse me, 18th chapter, 11th through the 13th verse. Satan, Satan is behind these types of things. Uh, the interest of these things comes from a desire to know and control the future. So because Paul knew that the girl was activating a demonic spirit, he cast the spirit out of her, out of her. And so like in the movies, you know, when something happens, it goes dun, dun, dun. So I need y'all to go dun, dun, dun. (laughs) So he cast the spirit out of her. And when he goes to cast it out, once once her owners, because again, she was a, a slave girl, once her owners realized the loss of their slave girl's fortune telling ability, they were furious. They were furious because they looking at it like, oh no, nah, you just messed up my money. You just messed up my money. They didn't care. They didn't care. They cared less about the fact that Paul and Silas were speaking eternal truth. They didn't even care that the slave girl had been delivered. They just realized that they just lost money. So Paul and Silas were dragged in front of the city rulers in marketplace and they were beaten. They were beaten and they were thrown into prison. So the jailer, which is the guard who uh, who was assigned to guard them. And when he went to put them into the prison, he also put stocks around their feet. And if you look at your screen right here, this is where what stocks look like. And, And normally these wooden things were put on the most dangerous um prisoner so those things those stocks were put on their feet they were put into jail uh about midnight paul and silas they began praying and singing 
even the other prisoners were listening. I don't know about you all, but it's just something about getting up during that midnight to 3 a.m. and having that prayer time with God. Things just hit different when it comes to during that midnight time. During that 12, midnight, and 3 in the morning, that's when the enemy is really busy. Busy While you sleeping and slumbering, that's when he's really plotting and planning and putting things in place. So then when you wake up in the morning, that's, you know, your, your day already gets kicked off with his plots and plans. So I highly encourage to get up once or twice or so throughout the week, pray midnight, between that midnight and 3 o'clock hour. And begin to just have your way and have God to just work through you when it comes to prayer. I'm telling you, it's a it's a difference. And so with it being that they were doing this, um, they that's when things begin to change. So as they were singing, suddenly there was a violent earthquake. And when that earthquake happened, the prison doors flew open and everyone chains came loose. So the guard which is just you'll see in your uh in your bible like your niv it says the jailer but the guard woke up and saw all the doors had been opened and he just knew that all the prison prisoners had escaped so because he had this in his mind he know he knew that shoot as a guard i'm responsible for the prisoners and i'm going to be held accountable for their escape so you know what let me just make it easy on them and draw my sword and he was about to get ready and slice and dash and cut up and kill himself but right before he was about to take his own life that's when paul yelled and he said don't harm yourself we are all here so once the guard heard that he ran into their cell and then that's when it was like he, he dropped to his knees, right? And he saw, the guard saw the type of men that Paul and Silas were. These are these were men who had committed no crime. These are peaceful men. Men that were put in stock, again, designed for holding the most dangerous prisoner. The, he witnessed these same men who praised God. They prayed and they sung despite their situation. So due to what the guard had just witnessed, explains the reason of our scripture today. So now we are with the good news, the end of the movie. And it reads again, he then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the day, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized, were baptized. So understand that a covenant believer can open up the doors of salvation to his or her family by walking with God. Along with that, being a covenant believer can also intercede on your family's behalf and expect God to heal and deliver. If you go back and you see, he asked, what must I do? What must I do to be saved? And they told him, "You all you got to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And on top of that, you and your household, you and your household. So this shows us no matter our circumstance or the history of our family, that we should continue to include God in everything we do because others may come to Christ because of God using us as an example. We must pray always pray excuse me that God continues to use us to introduce Jesus to our family and that their salvation come upon our family and that they can believe come to believe in Jesus come to believe in Jesus and so the end of this 34 says the jailer brought them 
into his house and set a meal before them, he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. So let's go into our prayer points. Let's go into our prayer points because we are about to intercede for our family. For though we're going to the throne of grace to get those lost souls in our family so that salvation can begin to pour over our family. So family prayers to declare over uh, our life. Our first prayer point comes from 2 Samuel 20. Third chapter, fifth verse. Although my family is not so with God, He has made us an everlasting covenant. This is our salvation, and the Lord will increase the salvation of my family. I bind and rebuke every demon that has been assigned to my family members to prevent them from receiving salvation. Violence waste and destruction shall no longer be heard of in my family we will call our walls salvation and our gates praise isaiah 60 with chapter 18 verse let the way of the lord be made known in my family and his salvation among us all psalm 67 chapter second verse psalm 67 second verse the Lord's salvation is about to come to my family and his righteousness will be revealed. Isaiah 56 chapter first verse. May godly sorrow produce repentance in my family, leading them to salvation. 2 Corinthians 7 chapter 10 verse. And as always, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. So now we're going to go before the Lord. We done done our, our prayer points. We're about to go ahead and decree and some declare some things. So join me right now as we go into prayer. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, that we are the intercessors for our family, Lord God. Father God, right now, I am praying, Lord, that you, Lord God, allow your hand to touch those lost souls in our family father god let it be god that you are using us in the things that we do or say that your light is shining so bright father god that that cousin that is lost that daughter that is lost that son that is lost that husband that is lost that grandmother that is lost all the family father god that is lost oh god that you're choosing us and using us to bring them to your kingdom oh god let it be, Father God, that you're using us. And when we are talking and speaking to them, that is not us. It's not our flesh. It's not our carnal minds, oh God. But it's your Holy Spirit, Father God, that is working through us and communicating to them in a way that they understand, oh God. Father God, we cast out right now the spirit of judgment. We cast out the spirit of self-righteousness. We cast out the spirit of religion right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray, God, that you help us and allow us to do what it is that you called us to do, Father. Let it be, Father God, that it's not us that the people see, but it's you, God. Let it be, Father God, that you even remind us. When those moments come up, Father, that when we do begin to judge, when we do allow self-righteousness to try to slip in, that you convict us and remind us, Lord God, that we too was once lost in the name of Jesus, oh God, that we are not better than the next God, but we should be able to reach back, Father God, and help our friends and help our family, Father God, to be able to give their life to you so salvation, God, can begin to dwell over them, oh God. Doors will begin to open for them, oh God. Financial blessings will Will begin to come to them healing will be able to come to them oh god peace will be able to come to their minds oh god because of who you are in the name of jesus god we rebuke and we cast out every stronghold oh god we rebuke and break every uh, generational curse oh god we come against those thoughts that the enemy try to prep put on our minds because of the history of our family god because we will not lord god allow the enemy to win in the name of jesus god lord have your way in our life oh God let your will be done in our in our life oh God father God we will not Lord God 
have the spirit of poverty. We will not have the spirit of drugs. We will not have the spirit of lying. We will not have the spirit of lust, oh God. We will not have these things, oh God. These things must be broken, Lord. And we're standing in the gap right now, Father God, to let, to let it be broken in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you uproot it, oh God, from its roots, oh God. Cut it off, oh God, so that it does not return, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we know we cannot do this without you. We know, Father God, that you are in the midst, oh God. So because we are standing in the gap, oh God, we know that your salvation has to come upon our family. You have to save our family. You have to keep your, your, your promises, oh God. You are a covenant-keeping God. In the name of Jesus, our mothers do not belong to Satan. Our fathers do not belong to Satan. Our children do not belong to Satan. Our grandmothers do not belong to Satan. Our family do not belong to Satan. He must die in the name of Jesus. We kill every plot, every trick and plans of the enemy. We kill it right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. Oh, yeah, did I cut it be in the name of Jesus? God, have your way right now. Speak upon us, oh God. How keep your hands around us, oh God. Keep your hands around our family. Even the ones, oh God, who are rebellious against against you, oh God. We know, Father God, that if we stand in the gap, oh God, you will hear our prayers, oh God. So keep covering that cousin. Keep covering that brother. Keep covering that sister. Keep covering that child, oh God. Keep covering that parent, oh God. Keep doing it, Lord. And help them and guide them, oh God. We break it away, the spirit of rebellious, in the name of Jesus, God. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise, Jesus. We thank you, God, because you are an amazing God. You are worthy, God. And we thank you, Lord, for just being an amazing God. Lord God, we just lift up our families and put them in your hands. Some of us are ready to give up. Some of us are ready to throw it in the towel. Some of us are ready to just detach ourselves from our bloodlines. But God, if we do that, we know that we have allowed the enemy to win. So God, just like we've been putting on all our prayer points at the bottom, we will not stop praying. That's why we're fasting. That's why we're praying because we're believing that God, you are going to change and shift things in our life. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Thank you all so much for joining us in our noon day prayer. Join us tonight at uh, 630. We're going to be uh, doing our Bible study. You can join in uh, on Facebook Live or on YouTube. Uh, And then also come Thursday morning, 7 a.m. Join us on Thursday. We do have our corporate prayer call where we actually dial in and we pray together on the phone. We would love to have you 7 a.m. It typically takes about five to seven minutes. So I'm telling you, you may want to hop on by 6.55 so you don't miss it. So we thank you for joining us in our day 11 and we'll see you back here tomorrow, same time, noon. Bless you.